In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an old new product from Flywoo. Now, this is called the Explorer HD, and it comes in two different variants. We have the Cadex Vista variant and also the analog variant here. So this is not your typical quadcopter for a couple of reasons. One is it, it has extended flight time, and with that comes some side effects as well. Now, we're going to talk about its flight performance, also the accessories, and also my experience and somewhat of durability because I've had about a 70 meter drop or so which you'll kind of see but not really because it, i just lost signal it fell and you get to see me finding it so let's go ahead and get started here let's see some of the things they do provide you in the packaging first they give you two arm braces which can go right here which i do highly recommend you add so we're going to get into these in a little bit here so they give you two of these and they give you an extra arm because the arms are pretty small, pretty thin, and they are trying to keep it as light as possible to keep it under that 250 gram weight limit and also give you some really great flight time. Now, they do also provide you with this 3D printed part, which allows you to install one of those Insta360 cams or whatever the hell they're called. The ones that shoot really shitty quality, one of those you could stick here and get some HD footage if you wanted to. So that's kind of nice out of the box here. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the quadcopter itself here. So this is a four inch quadcopter running gem fans here. They give you actually two sets of these. These are the Hurricane 4D24 uh, propellers here. So they are four inch propellers. They give you two sets, one that's on there and one you get right here. Now, this has quite a lot going on for it. One, we do have the HD variant right here right in front of us. We also have an analog variant, which we could talk about later on. There's also an LC filter for the analog variant to installed into the flight controller, which is a really nice addition. We have GPS. We also do have a receiver in here, depending on what you're going to get. And you also have a buzzer, which came in so useful to find this, because right now I would have probably been making this video without the quadcopter because I almost lost it. So for the stack they're using, it's actually a 16 by 16 stack here. We have 13 amp 2 to 4 S ESCs running D-Shot 600 maximum, an F411 microcontroller unit with just a 5 volt regulator, and we also have our video transmitter, which I don't have here, and I don't know how it performs, but I do have Decadix Vista, which probably a lot of people already know how those perform. And mine came with an XM Plus radio. I'll have the links down below so you can check out which one you would like instead. Now for motors here, they're using 1404 2750 kV motors, which is pretty interesting. Uh, combo here and we're going to talk about its flight performance in a bit now the gps is a nice little addition also just the execution is very very nice we also do have a bunch of 3d printed parts to basically keep it overall in good shape and try to minimize damage as much as possible here but the weakest link that i found on this quadcopter are actually the standoffs here i've already have two kind of stripped from a crash as you can tell i can pull that out so you might need to get some extra standoffs here because I don't think they're of good quality. But that's not really a big deal breaker here. And those should be theoretically very cheap to purchase. Now, the flight performance. Now, and again, this is not an FPV race. So this is not an FPV freestyle quadcopter, even though you could kind of do some maneuvers with it. But the overall aim of this is to fly for very long and just to cruise really that's it like they say it's meant to stay under the fcc regulations and at the same time for people who like to cruise because its acrobatic performance is mediocre at best and the way that it feels when you are flying it if you are interested in that aspect right there is it feels like the older I don't know how most of you, how long most of you've been flying for, but if you've been flying for at least a year and a half, you would have probably remembered the old uh, six inch Martians, how they felt kind of floaty and just wobbly kind of. That's how you kind of feel this one. It can do some stuff. It's not very fast, but overall you get a lot, a lot of flight time. And again, that's its main purpose here. Now, when I went flying, I don't know why I expected GPS rescue mode or whatever to be automatically enabled if I lost signal. And um, yeah, actually, maybe the standoff wasn't the weakest point. I think the screws were because now the screw just came off and we could see from my crash. It was a really, really high drop. It just cracked the screw here. Now, this is a nice thing that this happened. Do you know why? Because if this didn't crack, then the arm would have cracked. So this is a nice little uh, thing to know here, I guess. But you're still going to need standoffs, basically, because of the screws. So I do have a couple of those that actually... And it was a pretty hard crash, actually. It was a very long drop. Yeah, I have two of those. Yeah, they're basically uh, broken. So the screws do break here. And also the standoffs are basically stripped as well. 
Let's see if we can find any more. And that's really it here. So yeah, make sure you invest in a couple more screws. They do provide actually more screws in the box and uh, just get more, yourself more standoffs. You're probably gonna need those. Uh, this is definitely gonna need new standoffs here. So out of the box, GPS rescue mode isn't enabled or I mean, when you fail safe, cause I fail safed and uh, it just dropped out of the sky and um, I was able to get it back. But I, I'm really, really surprised at how it took the drop because nothing was damaged other than those two screws and the tape right here. And it was a really, really long drop. And also the way that it drops is it usually tends, I think, to flip over and land on the battery. So that's kind of a good thing that your battery, my battery got destroyed basically in that crash. Um, so that's kind of a good sign. I know it's a different aspect of a review I'm giving you, but I'm giving you what happened with me and the things that could happen to you. There were some bounce backs on when you're trying to do something very aggressive, you could see that. And it just felt loose in the air. And again, it felt like a six inch uh, from back in the day, maybe because it's light in the battery. And also the battery placement plays a big role of how it's gonna fly, like if it's far up forward, how far back. So you're gonna have to play with that to get that perfect because it's very, very sensitive to where the battery is being placed on this guy. Now, theoretically, you should be able to stick two batteries, maybe one on the bottom, one on the top, and probably get a bit more flight time. I haven't tested this, but if I do have time, I will go out and test it. But overall, as a long flying, under 250 gram quadcopter with HD capabilities, there's nothing else in the market like it, which is a really nice thing if you wanted to get some HD footage with your Cadex Vista, if you know how the quality actually is. It's not my preferred type of HD quality, but if you're into that, that that's, that's there for you. However, personally, I would, the way that I would actually run this is I'd probably stick a run cam split four, run it back here instead of the Vista, and I'll be happy because then I could actually use that footage because the Cadex Vista footage, at least in Europe, it's basically unusable and I'm limited to 25 milliwatts. I know I could jailbreak that, but I won't do that. And um, yeah, my preferred way, especially if you're in Europe, I would personally go with the analog. It's much lighter and then just incorporate a split four HD in this thing. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous. You could use this for really nice shots as well. So that's something I would personally do with this. But overall, it's a very, very nice quadcopter. It has its own category. This is a brand new category that we're looking at. So there is really nothing else to compare it to. All I can tell you is it flies good. It's pretty durable. Just to, just keep a note about the screws here and also double check your screws before you go out flying and also get yourself some more standoffs. And I think you should be good to go into that perspective and enjoy some really, really long flights. And well, everything's linked down below. And I'll leave you guys with the raw video footage so you can go ahead and check that out for yourself. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.
So I just fail saved and I forgot to turn on uh, rescue mode, but luckily the Explorer has that little beeper, but I think it's on the roof, so hopefully we can figure something out. Anyways, we'll have to probably fly another drone to see. It sounds like. I have a feeling it's on the floor. Oh, please don't tell me it's up there again. No, it's oh. here. Oh! Hi! Yes! Oh. Let's see damage. Oh, the battery. Okay, who cares? That little buzzer is just an absolute lifesaver, really. While I was falling from there, I kept pushing the throttle. I lost all video feed. Mm -hmm. And um, and I was hoping that maybe it could get in somewhere here. That's crazy. All right, well, guys, we found it, and uh, that's really good. And I think I'm going to call it a day for this one. This is the second time I lost one. Last time it was up there, and I had to climb up there. It was an absolute nightmare.